السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمني ما ي... اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي جزاكم الله خير for coming I can ask a question and a request not a question is a request actually I did this yesterday I flew just this morning from Detroit so uh, please forgive me for being maybe not the best in my in the way I I speak because it was a long flight um, I was in the knowledge retreat yesterday in Detroit it's one of the biggest knowledge conferences um, it was amazing for many reasons other than one of them is a huge snowstorm on Friday and I'm coming from California and everybody was complaining it was cold and it was only 40 for zero so I told them this is what I'm taking back with me to the people of California stop complaining so this is just a disclaimer <clears throat> I'm going to ask what I asked yesterday. I need everyone to stop eating and drinking. If I knew this is how it is, I normally don't come. Yeah, this is not a wedding. I really mean it. I think we all as Muslims need to change. You don't go to a medical conference and you have people speaking something really important and they don't do this. This is usually lunch break, they call it, for those of you any profession you go, but I can, I'm giving you an example from medicine because that's what I do. This is, is only in the lunch break, and this is optional, actually. You have to pay extra because that's with food. So why when we say, قال الله, قال الرسول, this is how we are. You know what that tells me? What that tells me, me, I'm telling me, not telling you. Food and drink is equal to what Allah says and the Rasul, alayhi salatu I'm telling me, it's everything is perception. It's how you perceive things. So um, last time when I was here, it wasn't this way, actually. It was absolutely a hall with women. It was packed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Let's, this is a test from Allah. So everyone, and I say this to myself, I'm not going to die if I didn't drink for, a, for an hour. Anybody? I don't think so. So let's do this because you're not going to get the benefit. You'll be distracted. Same thing with the phones. Don't record. It's already recorded. I really mean it. It's, it's, this is why we always wonder, you know, the, one of the commonest questions I personally get is what? Why I'm not changing? And this is from the people who are practicing. Like I memorize, I'm memorizing the Quran, I attend all this, I, morning to evening I hear lectures on YouTube, and nothing is changing. Because I am not changing the way I look at knowledge. Everything is how you look at it. And where is it in your priority list? If you have tomorrow a very important exam, you're not going to be sitting like that and all the food in front of you, and nibbling on it. You won't. You say, I can't focus. I'll take a break, and I'll go and eat, and I'll come back. I need to focus. Did you get my point? So this is very important. And again, my apology to the organizers, who may Allah reward them, but I think we need to change. Last week, was it last week? Where is Rania? Yeah, it was last week. We had the women conference in um, Irvine. In, in the masjid, in my masjid, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, were 370 women. And the reason this is the number, because we could not put them anywhere. And the first thing I said, there is no food or drink in the area where we are speaking. There is beautiful tents outside. We gave them two hours to eat. But when the speaker standing up, let alone the whole, the whole title was my Quran, my connection with Allah, my Ramadan. How am I going to do this and I'm eating? You know what I'm saying? What is food? Food is two things. Either I'm eating because I need, or I'm eating because it's my break. I'm giving myself something. I can't then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm eating. Can you imagine sahaba sitting eating and doing dhikr? And this is something, please. And I said the same thing, subhanAllah, yesterday. 
And even one of the speakers, he said, okay, Dr. Raifa is not here, so okay, go ahead and drink your water till she comes back. And guess what? I didn't know this. I just entered. And he was just saying this. So let's do this to start with. Everybody in this room. And it's tempting because it's in front of you. And then give me your heart and brain. But first is your heart, my, your heart. And one of the first advices I was given, and may Allah reward everyone who taught me, is literally, the sheikh, this was literally 20 years ago. And he was saying, you know, it was on the phone. And he said, this is the book I want you to study. And this is the way I want you to study the book. Normally, you start from the beginning to the end. He said, no, not this way. And he was telling me everything. Are you writing? Do you have a piece of paper? I was like, okay. And then he said, a pause. And then he said, when you read the line of a book related to your relationship with Allah, you don't read it as if you are bedtime story. You're not at bed, and you know, you, you just want to wind down and you know, feel better, and then you read. And he said, one time, sometimes one line in a book, not the book of Allah, I spent four hours. And I was like, read, I, I didn't say anything at that time, you know, you're a new student, but I'm like, really, four hours? Yeah, why do you do that? But I didn't say it out of adab with the teacher. But guess what? Now he's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Sometimes you just say, ah, oh, wow, subhanak. How did the author think of this? I've read the verse how many times? Never felt this way or wrote this way. Because their hearts were cleaner. Their hearts were clean. As Sayyidina Uthman has a famous line. Any school of memorization of the Quran, you probably will see it, and if not, it should be. He said, لو طهرت قلوبنا ما شبعت من كلام ربنا if our hearts were clean, pure, we'll never have enough from the Quran. And he didn't say Quran, Kalami Rabbina, from the words of our Lord. So this is how you shift and change. Shift and change how you are waiting or how are you going to welcome Ramadan. You know, everybody now talking about Ramadan is less than two weeks. Right? Two weeks and few days left. How are you going to welcome it? What changes you already implement before Ramadan? Because I say this to myself before anyone. Ramadan is not a switch. You know, you come to the room, it's dark, you switch and becomes... It's not. On the contrary, it's a huge struggle. Because you add to it what you are used to right now. And then you get headaches, and I'm tired, and I'm dehydrated. What changes you already implement, one, and what changes you're going to implement in Ramadan? This is how we change. You know, there's a saying here, like one of the sayings in the real world, corporate world, they say, if you keep doing what you are doing, what is the next part? You will keep getting what you are getting. This is one of the things they taught us in, in residency. If you keep doing what you are doing, you will keep getting what you are getting. You keep reading Ramadan, uh, Quran the same way, you will keep not understanding. You will keep listening to the lecture the same way, you will keep getting the same result. The change is when your heart change, the receiver. So give me your hearts. And the topic, I, and my apology to all the speakers I couldn't attend earlier, was about the woman in Islam. They wanted me to, ask, to talk about Asia. I gave them the shock of their life. I said, I'm not going to talk about Asia. You know why? Because we all know the story of Sayyida Asiya. Who doesn't know the story of Sayyida Asiya? Show me hands. Really? I'll tell you in a very short. It's a woman who I wish I was her. Period. It's a woman who when you enter Medina, those of you who read Arabi, you will read as you enter Medina, there is a dua. It's hers. Her name is not mentioned in the Quran, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Refer to her as the wife of Fir'aun. Don't be upset when they refer to you as the wife of. Because you're not better than her. Definitely you're not. None of us. Because there's only four best women. And she is one of them. She gave her life for this religion. She didn't change when she knew it's true. It didn't matter who was her husband. It doesn't matter what he did to her. That's the story of Sayyidah Asi. That's it. She was married to this tyrant, leader, rich. She has everything in this life. 
enjoying her life like everybody else. But then she found there's something truth called worship Allah. This is before Islam, of course. Worship Allah. She found Allah. Nothing else matter. How many ask you in this room? How many can claim that she's Asya? And she was not looked at and made fun of. And she was not called this and that. Like what we get. She was tortured. I mean, her torture is painful. I cannot even say because I just can't imagine. And in the middle of the torture, her connection is with Allah. Ya Allah, please build a house for me, for me with you in Jannah. Ya Allah, build a house with you, عندك, yours. This is a beautiful way of Arabi, Arabic language when you say that you are more important than the house. I want you before the house. The house is in Jannah. So this is Sayyidah Asiya. That's the first thing. How many of you are Sayyidah Asiya? You all knew about it except you. How many of us went to through 1% of what she wanted? Not even one person. What is our problem? They look at us when we walk in the street. Who cares? Right? What is the problem? They say, I have an accent. So what? Let them say it. You know what? I say, you're right. I do have an accent. What is the problem with that? It's me. I didn't go through what she went through. Actually, I didn't even struggle. You struggled more than me. I was given to it when I was born. And I don't like it. Many of us don't like it. We don't want to change it or brush it. You know, some people tell me American Islam. I said, what does American Islam mean? Islam has no nationality, does it? There's no passport called Islam. It's Islam is Islam. Time of Rasulullah, the companions, the followers, and everything. So what you learn from Sayyidah Asiya is Probably the word I will use, persistence. And don't change. It doesn't matter what happens around you. That's who she is. Her test was that. All the circumstances around her, because it is at the end of Surah Tahrim where the four women were mentioned. You probably all know this. I'm sure you, I'm sure you heard this all day today. There's four women mentioned in the Quran without their name except the last one but they were referred to as the wife of, two were the bad example, and two were the good example. And Allah starts with the bad example. And their husbands were prophets. So don't blame your husbands. No, I really mean it. I'm not making jokes. Because a lot of the people, you know what we are very good at? Throwing it on someone else. You know, it's my husband, it's my son, it's mine, it's my career, it's my, the people who I work with. It's always somebody else's fault. These two women, the first two, which I don't know if anybody talked about them, no names in the Quran, the wife of Sayyidina Nuh and the wife of Lut. Both were prophets. And both were, the women were not, not non-believers. And Allah absolutely described them in the way negative. And then comes, He is referred to her no name. I don't care what is my name in, in this life. What is Allah is going to call me? How he is going to identify me? It doesn't matter your name. And people get shy and change their name, Muhammad to Mo, Usami to Sam. Really, it's painful. It's our problem. We are not comfortable in our skin. This is how I say it. We are not comfortable in our skin. Young and old. You are born here. So what? You're still a Muslim. I need to be comfortable in my skin as a Muslim, not in my identity. When I lived overseas, everybody was asking me, how do you identify yourself? Because I was born in Iraq, and I'm an American. And I was like, look at them and said, I'm a Muslim woman. That's it. But when I say this, I have to act and speak and walk and dress like that title. Otherwise, I am a liar, a hypocrite. So what she was, a woman, when she made a decision, she was persistent. And no obstacles, and Allah knows how many obstacles was in front of her, did not deter her a minute. But what I want to talk to you about is, 
who are we in the Quran? Because sometimes you're going to say, you know, this is Asiya, or this is Sayyida Maryam, and I'm not Sayyida Maryam, and this is the mother of Musa, I'm not the mother of Musa. These are all, okay, what did Allah describe us, or not us, who he wants? A description of the best woman. It's in the Quran. Anyone knows? It's in the Quran. Okay, let's let me give it to you in another way. Do you all know the story? What happened between with Sayyida Hafsa and Sayyida Aisha, right? And then what happened? So I took tahrim, right? So Sayyida Hafsa, Rasulullah, there's many stories, more than one narration. Probably the one is that he said something to Sayyida Hafsa, the daughter of Sayyidina Umar, and says, don't say this to anybody else. She went and said to Sayyida Aisha. Okay, and Sayyida Aisha said it to Rasulullah, and Rasulullah was not happy. Right? He said, who told you? She said to him, who, how do you know I told you? He said, Allah told me. Now this is the next two, two, two ayat is... You, each one in this room, and everybody who's listening to me, you need to say the following. Am I that woman? And he didn't mention names. He said to Rasulullah, you're upset with them? You, you don't want them? And Allah was talking to Sayyida Aisha and Sayyida Hafsa. Asa Rabbuhu in talaqakunna ayyubdilahu azwajan khayran min kunna. Let's start this. Allah is saying to Sayyida Aisha and Sayyida Hafsa, if he will decide to divorce you, and you know who is Sayyida Aisha, and you know who is Sayyida Hafsa, right? One is her father, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the other one, her father is Sayyidina Umar. Is that your parents, my parents? No. But they still did something they shouldn't do. They're human. And the Rasulullah was debating. And Allah said to him, you decide you want to divorce them? Divorce them. In, in, it means it's not going to happen. But if this is who we are going to give you, there's no name. It's a description. He is going to give them wives better than the current wives. What is their description? This is what you all need to learn. And he gave 10 descriptions. Does anyone know that other than Maryam? Hi. Yes, Bismillah. Muslimatin, Mu'minatin, Qanitatin, Ta'ibatin, Abidatin, Sa'ihatin, Tayyibatin, Wa Abkara. This is eight. There's another verse where it has ten. But I started with this. So here you are. You think, you think you are better than this person. Okay. That's your perception. You could be right. Come on in. And let's look at these. So Allah is telling Rasulullah your wives, the mothers of the believers. Right? Sayyida Aisha is Fadlu Aisha ala ahda kunna ka fadlil taridi ala ta'am. The virtues of Aisha over all the women is like the meat over the rest of the, of the food. It's just a parable. That Aisha, Allah says, you know what? You want to di divorce her? This is what I'm going to give you. Allah is saying to Rasulullah Sallallahu Number one is a Muslim. How many Muslim is in this room? Show me hands. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You're all Muslim. Why you're here then? Right? So number one, you're Muslim, right? Yes? What does Muslim mean? That's the question. It is not only Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasul. That's taken. That's for sure. And it is not what only what a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, the famous hadith Jibreel. When Sayyidina Jibreel came to him and he said, Akhbarni an al-Islam, what is Islam? And he said, the five pillars. That's external. If that was the case, well, Sayyida Aisha and Sayyida Hafsa were Muslims. So why did Allah say Muslimat? What is Islam here? And this is the meaning. I'm going to give you a meaning of everyone. And then you say to yourself, is it me? Don't think of anybody else. Don't think of anyone sitting next to you. 
definitely don't think about me. It is you. You're going to be in front of Allah alone, and he is going to ask you, and you're going to say, yes, I am. He knows, of course. Are you a Muslim? In the real meaning of Islam. What is the real meaning of Islam? You submit to the will of Allah willingly. Submit to the will of Allah willingly. There is no if and but, and I live in the States, and I'm in California, and this is 2023, and I went to college, well, I start working, where my husband is that, and my children are this. That's all excuses. When Allah said, Woman ahsanu deenan, and now he used again Islam, Woman ahsanu deenan mimman aslama wajhahu lillahi wa huwa muhsan wattaba'a millata Ibrahim khalila. Islam, Allah here said in Surah An-Nisa, who's better deen, who's better religion than the one who submit to the will of Allah? What is the will of Allah? At this moment, I don't want you to tell me uh, that time. That's why I changed the subject. Because I need us all to start living Islam. Living the real one. Not the one in the books. And we all know. You all know Asia. But how many Asia in this room? Real Asia in this room in her daily life. How many real Muslims in this room in her daily life? So how many times in the day, this is how you say to yourself, by the way, nobody is perfect. Of course you're going to fail. Of course I'll fail. But I need to start looking at myself from this way. Are you a Muslim? Yes. And I say to myself, really? Okay. Come on in. What did he tell me this morning I should do? What does he want me to do right now? Right now. At this moment. What does Allah want you to do at this moment? Listen and learn, not to me. Listen and not only listen, what does he want me? He want me to make the determination to I'll change. Why do we do all these conferences? Is it just to give you information? So are you a Muslim? You're going to say, Ya Allah, that's what you want me? You brought me here? Who brought you here? I didn't bring you. Don't you think you came? Allah brought you. Allah made this happen. Right? Allah made this happen. Allah made you come. Allah gave you the car. Allah gave you the ability, the determination. You want to come, the money, the whatever, whatever. I'm sure there's people who registered couldn't come. And I'm sure there's people who wanted to come and couldn't come. But Allah chose you. So what does he want you to do? Submit to his will. Be a Muslim walking. So when people look at you, she's the Muslim woman, not because you wear hijab. That's external. So number one, Asa Rabbuhu, Ayyub Didahu Khayram Mikuna Muslimat. Submit to the will of Allah. Don't argue. One of the biggest problems human beings having these days and age is argument. Everything I'm not convinced. Everything why? Why not? You know, I had a friend, alhamdulillah, I have a, good, a couple of non-Muslim friends. And I always love discussion. And I say, why are you doing this? And she says, why not? And I said, if I keep saying why not, then, then I'm going to go and kill somebody. And I say, why not? Did you see the point? So Muslim, she submit to the will of Allah. If you are a married woman, what does a Muslim married woman mean? What does submit to Allah mean? If I am a divorced woman, what does that mean? Well, if I am single, if I am a mother, if I'm a student, what does that mean? I'm still Muslim. In all these, I'm still, the title top is Muslim. Second, mu'minat. What is a mu'mina? What is a believer? Thank you, that's translation. What is in reality? When I say I believe, what does it mean? I believe with no doubt. In what? In what? You believe in what? Okay, you believe of the, all the unseen, well, akhira, we all know that. But reality here, you need to go back and say, what is the Rasul said about the character of a believer? 
and a character of a Muslim. Right? Al Muslim, man salim al Muslimuna, mi yadihi, olisane. The Muslim, the real Muslim or woman, man or woman here, is those who the Muslims are safe from their tongue and hand. Are we? Everybody backbiting is like norm, accusing people like norm, especially in the day and age of social media. Someone sends you an information, immediately you start sharing and forwarding. I'm a Muslim. A Muslim is the Muslim where the Muslims are safe. They say, oh, Fatima is here. Don't worry. You're not going to hear any words. That's how it should be. Al-Mu'min. What is Al-Mu'min? What is Iman? In practice, you. What did the Rasul There's so many hadiths where it says, لا يؤمن أحدكم. But I just chose one. came to my mind. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخي ما يحب لنفسه. You will not be a real believer until you love to your sister. And this is not blood sister. Sister. What you love for yourself. Really? You come in here, and there is only one seat left, and there's five people there. Will you give up your seat to her? You don't know her. Ramadan is going to come, and I'm sure here is like everywhere else. The night of 27, jammed, packed, right? And you're going to say, you know what? I have no problem. I'm going to pray here. Or everybody will be fighting to pray there. لا يؤمن أحدكم. You're not a real believer unless you think of what you want is exactly what she wants, then she will do good. I will give it to her because I'm a mu'mina, not because I'm good or people will praise me or she is my friend or she did this to me. No, because I'm a mu'mina and I went in front of Allah and I said, Ya Rabbi, you taught me this and I practiced it. Qanitat, now the biggest problem. What is Qanita? I'm just translating the, the verse to you. It's, this is woman in the Quran. Khayram min kunna muslimatin mu'minatin Qanitat. What is a Qanita? Who was described as Qanita? Sayyida Maryam. Always. You go to the Quran, this is either the word itself or the meaning. What is the Qanit? So many meanings of it. But what you say yourself, I am in Qunut. You know the dua al Qunut? Every, everybody, the dua we do in Fajr usually. If you are a Shafi'i, you do it almost every day. But in Ramadan, they all do it in, uh, in the winter. You hear it. What is that? What is that dua? Why is it called Qunut? That's a, that's a different lecture. But Qunut is your need. And you're so humble. You act like a beggar, and you don't argue, and you don't put your own rules. That's al-qanita. This is one of the biggest problems these days. Women. Women. Don't lose what Allah gave you. This is what I say to myself. This is how he wants me, and he created me to be this way. Why do I want to change it? Why do you want to start fighting with everybody out? You know what I'm saying? It's just we're gradually losing our identity, even as a woman, let alone as a, as a Muslim woman. Qanita, Allah, to Allah. We're afraid of people. We submit to people. We think of people. When Allah comes in, Muslimatin, Mu'minatin, Qanitatin, Ta'ibatin. Those repent, repent on daily. And the, if you look at the way Allah used in which form, it's in the constant form. It's not one time or Ramadan night 27 or when something happens or I need Allah. It is constant. Like when someone say, you know what? She is uh, she's very smart. That doesn't mean you're smart one time. She, this is your character. Or she dressed very nice. That means always. And Allah, that's what he said. In all the descriptions, 
Ta'ibat, state of tawbah, repent to Allah. That's the key to welcome Ramadan. This is the key. You know, when you open the door, someone is coming, and you have to hold the handle and open the door. For Ramadan to open the door, you need to be in a state of tawbah. Many of us don't even know what a state of tawbah is. Like, what is wrong with me? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Yes, alhamdulillah, you're fine. I'm sure. May Allah make you better. But there's a lot of room for improvement. As I say this to myself, the followers. You know, there's a Rasul alayhi salatu wasana, his companions and the followers. It's less than 100 years. The followers did things. The Sahaba companions looked at them and said to them, you are doing things you these days, that time. You look at them as if they are so small and thinner than a hair. At the time of Rasul, we regarded them as action which will immerse us in Jahannam. Min al -mubiqat. What did they do? And this is, you know who's tabi'in? Some of the names, like Al Hassan al Basri. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyab, and these names. And here we are. We need to be in constant tawbah. You remember what you did, alhamdulillah. You didn't remember what you do, doesn't matter because it's already written. It's there. Constant tawbah, that's the Muslim woman. Always in tawbah. Always look at her actions. You know the selfie that everybody is crazy about these days? Honestly, I mean, yesterday in the, uh, I, at the end, I was joking with the woman. I'm going to charge you $2 for every selfie. I'm going to be very rich. Everybody. And every time I, someone takes selfie with me, you know what I say? I need to take a selfie of my heart. And what is the heart is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, we look at the external, the face, I look good. You know, but what is the heart is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's what I need, the tawbah. Tawbah is not external. Tawbah is about internal things, my thoughts, how I looked at you, how you looked at me. What did I say? What did I think? Why did I do that? Why I didn't do that? Ta'ibat. These are four things. In another verse in the Quran, and this is a woman who asked the Rasul Alaihi Feminist, if you want to use the word. It's two of them. There's a, there's a two narration about it. it's either his wife Sayyida Umm Salama or it's uh, Nusayba Sayyida Nusayba Umm Amara both ask the same question and I yet I want a woman to hear a woman asking this question this day and age what is the most common question that you hear women asking about men and women in the Quran equality inheritance, right? Uh, why this, why that? All, all the things that we think, may Allah forgive me for even saying it, it's not fair, simply because I don't understand. I don't know. What did they ask? And if you only know who's Sayyidah Nusayba, we covered her in the last woman conference. And who was Umm Salama? You know what they said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Why all the rewards are going to the men? And there's nothing for us women. It's not about the money. It's not about the husband, the man marries four women, why not me? I hear this, believe it or not. They said, why all the rewards are going to the men? What about us women? Malala Nuthkar, actually, in one of the narration, says why we are not even mentioned by names, meaning Allah always use the uh, uh, masculine form. What did Allah reveal? You think Allah doesn't listen to you? Do you think Allah doesn't want you what you deserve? And immediately he, this was revealed. And here, the, here is the ten criteria. And this is a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Write it down and see how many you have. And if you have it all, make sure you keep it in Ramadan. And after Ramadan, to become habits, till it come a habit. If you have none, don't despair. Definitely you have some. There's no way you don't have any. But if you have some, work on the rest. If you have none, which I doubt, start from today. 
And Allah said the following. It's a surah al-Ahzab. In al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat. The Muslim men and women. Wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat. The Muslim men and Muslim women. And then? I can't hear it. No, this is way at the end. In al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat. Wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat. wal Qanitina wal qanita, the same thing. These are together three. You believe, you submit, you submit, you believe, and then you submit and believe in your actions and in your relationship with Allah and your act of worship. And then these are actually, if you look at them, you're going to notice it's all first starts with the heart, then comes external. Because if you, in Muslim, Muslim, Mu'min, believe. Qanitin, and then As-Sadiqina or Sadiqat, the truthful. I'll come to it in a second. The truthful. Not a truthful external only. Part of it is only. Uh, part of it is external. As-Sadiqina or Sadiqat. Next, As-Sabirina or Sabirat. Patient men and patient women. Next, this is all internal still. We didn't go to the external yet. There's no salayat. Did you notice? There's no salayat. Those who are in a state of not only humbleness and submission to Allah during their ibadah. And then comes to the external. And then? Those who give charity. I'll come to it. And then? Those who Fast, men and women, and then والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات those who protect and guard their private part. I'll come to it in in at least one line for everyone. And the last one, والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات those who remember Allah, men and women, a lot. This is the only one كثيرا, plenty. Not only in the morning, in the evening. And Allah says, أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah prepared for them مغفرة, forgiveness, and a great reward. So we covered Muslimin, we covered Muslimat, right? What is, what is Qanita? We covered that. What is Khashia? Show me hands. When was the last time you cried in a salah? Alone. Show me hands. Stand up with Allah alone, reading the Quran. You are reading it. And you start crying. When was the last time? Then khushu is an issue. It's not only focus. Definitely it needs focus. But you have this relationship with Allah that his words is moving you. And when you hear it, Something happens in your heart. And you, you know what's the, one of the definition of it? One of the scholars says, Al-Khasha, in Salah, it's usually about Salah. That he or she doesn't know what is on the right, what is on the left. They don't know what is happening. Then you are in a state of khushur. And then, As-Sadiqeen, truthful. Truthful is not in the words only. That's by itself is a huge problem. What did I say? It's a, it's a white lie. What is a white lie? What is a gray lie? What is a black lie? There's nothing in this. You're truthful, number one, with whom? With Allah. You said, I believe. You said, I'm a Muslim. You said, I love you. And I actually did this when I did the love of Allah three weeks ago. And I, before I started, I said, show me hands, how many of you love Allah? Alhamdulillah, everybody did. And then as we went through what love of Allah means, and you can see how people are saying, I think I need to work on my feelings and my love. So truthful, truthful, you say the truth. It doesn't matter what it will take. You still say the truth. And because the Rasul Salaam was asked, the Muslim, the, the Muslim does this, actually the believer. 
Does this or the major says, he said yes. Does this, he said yes. Does this, he said yes. When he was asked, actually the believer, does the believer lie? Immediately, there's many variations of it. One of it is says his face changes and says no. And that's why Allah put tear. As-sadiqeena, truthful. Even if you're a Muslim, you never lie. Children will not learn lying unless they see it in the house. Where did they learn it from? When you say, I'm coming, and you have no intention to come. When you say, see you at seven, and you have no intention, not something happened and you got late. That's, that's all of us goes through this. But when you really have no intention, then I am not saying the truth. Wasadiqina wasadiqat. Wasabirina wasabirat. Patient. Patient. Three things we need to practice patient. One is to stay away from the sins. I need patient. It's very tempting these days. SubhanAllah, I was in the, in the plane, not when I was coming back, when I was going there. In every screen in front of me, there was all this haram movies for four hours. SubhanAllah. So I was saying, Ya Allah, imagine if the person who was sitting next to me, a young man or a young woman, how much you need faith and strength and patience to lower your gaze. And you know how they put the haram in a very beautiful way. Subhanallah, it's exactly what shaitan said. I'm going to beautify it to them. And we all love it. Subhanallah, sabr, patient. I need to be patient to obey Allah. Whoever say obedience to Allah is easy. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has really made it easy for them or they have not obeyed Allah. It is not. It's, it's challenging. You are absolutely walking, driving, breathing against the flow. Like when I today boarded the plane, 400 people was in the plane. How many people looked like me? Zero. That's a struggle. For a 20-year-old and 25-year-old, that's a struggle. So I need patience. And the patient doesn't start here. It ends here. Starts with a simple one. Why do you think Allah said fast? What does fast? What is the other name of fasting in the Quran? Sabr. Ya ayuha ladheena amanu, sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. You all know this verse. Oh, believer, seek help with, and Allah used the word here, sabr, patient. And salah, prayer. And all the scholars will tell you, sabr here is fasting. Fasting teach you to be strong, patient, control. You know what? I, I wanted, I'm so thirsty. No, I'm fasting. And I'm not going to put it in my mouth till it says 5, 11. 5, 10, I can't do it. One minute. What is the big deal? No, no, I'm fasting. Sabirin. So you need to have patience to obey Allah. You need to have patience to stay away from the disobedience of Allah. And I need patience to live with the disasters. You all have seen what happened in Turkey. Which one is harder? Which one? Scholars differed and finally they agreed. Which one is the hardest one? To obey Allah or to stay away from the disobedience or to be patient when the decree of Allah happens? I'm sorry? Be patient on which one? Which one? Obey, stay away from disobedience, or on the decree of Allah? Absolutely wrong. This is the easiest one. You know why? Because I have no choice. I can't change it. I, I saw this with my own eyes. When I was talking to the victims of the earthquake, I went crazy. I was like, how these people are saying this? Nothing. Lost everything in a minute. And she tells you, Alhamdulillah. She can't do anything about it. The hardest one, you'll be very surprised, is to obey Allah. That's what sabru ala ta'at, they all agreed. You stay at bed 
or get up at five and pray Fajr. Even next is to be patient against the disobedience because not everyone disobedience is available for them. So sabirina was sabirat. As-sadiqina was sadiqat. Was sabirina was sabirat. And then Allah comes, wal mutasaddiqina wal mutasaddiqat. Charity. They say, whomsoever, pay. Charity, and they hear, of course, at that time, they say dirham. Let's say one dollar a week. They are under this description. A week. Why don't we do it daily? One dollar. One dollar. We buy this coffee and that coffee and that tea for six or seven dollars. And when somebody comes to you and says, just every day, just put one dollar. You know, you come to the masjid, put one dollar. And then you will be from those people. From those people. And I see people who, I, I had somebody who I worked with, they are immersed in debts. She was telling me, I can't tell you how much debts I have. And then I looked at her every single day. She drink this drink. Every day. I worked with her for two years. And I looked at her, non-Muslim. And I said, how much is this drink? I know. Six dollars. Every single day. And you're in debt. And then you come and say, you know, just one dollar. One dollar. Mm, masjid always asks for money. You know, this is the newest thing I'm listening, I'm hearing these days. Why all these uh, programs, we have to pay money? Why they are not free? And I was like, really? Do you go to the restaurant and they free? They feed you free? Why when it comes to any Islamic thing, we expect free? And then when it is given free, we don't even appreciate it. I don't want to say other words. Mutasaddiqeen. Be charitable. Don't tell me I don't have money. Yes, you do. I saw the people who don't have money. Nothing. They left. They just grabbed their children and left. Nothing. Those people had nothing. But you and me, everyone in this room, I can guarantee you can do one dollar a day. One dollar a day. Do it. From now till when Ramadan comes in, you're already charitable. You are one of these people. والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات Those who their constant description is fasting and they say this is usually الفرض والنفل meaning you fast Ramadan and you fast the extra and they say the minimum is the three days a month I don't want to see hands but you ask yourself how many of you did not fast since last Ramadan don't show me hands that's between you and Allah and if you are one of those people, why not? The day is still, still short. Next week will change. Why? I know people run marathon, Muslims, run marathon, and say, I can't fast. It's like crazy. Subhanallah, 23 miles. And you tell me, I can't, I can't live without water. I said, did you try? Asa'inina, are you? Are you somebody you look at and says, oh, mashallah, she is sawama. She always fast. Hafidina furujahum wal hafidat. a huge problem here. Guard and protect your private part is not only the obvious meaning that we all know. Alhamdulillah, I don't want, I don't think anybody in this room. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But the introduction to the real one. Are we? The way we dress? The way we dress? Young and old, Muslims, let alone cover their hair. I can't tell you how painful this is for me. Because I look at her young, beautiful girl. And Allah gave her the strength to cover the hair. You know how difficult it is to cover your hair? Because your beauty is your hair. Absolutely. And then, the rest is not pleasing to Allah. Everything is not showing, but showing. It's covered, but it's not covered. That's all introduction. I am seeing older women, adults, 30s, 40s, 50s, tight, tight, tight. Please forgive me. You're my dear sisters. 
So I, I always say she passed the, the you know, al-aqaba, falaqtaham al-aqaba, the, the, the real hurdle, the real hurdle is to put this. Then do it. Do it all. What is the big deal? Wallah, you will love it. And you don't know what Allah will give you. Because you struggled for him, not for anyone else. Why do I want to do this tight jeans and tight top? Who said this is okay? I yet I want to know who started this. And it's spread like fire. Fire. And they're coming to pray. Somebody prayed in front of me last week in the masjid. I didn't know she disappeared before I finished my salah. I would have hugged her. And I said, please. Just cover it. Because you just prayed in the masjid. Do you get my point? And I'm talking to the adult before the youth. Because the adult is doing it natural, normal. al hafidina furujahum is your private part is covered. Covered. You want to wear uh, jeans? Absolutely. Or you want to wear a pants? Absolutely. To me, it's actually more comfortable. I always do it under my abaya. But it needs to be covered. At least down to the knee. Then you are one of these hafidin all the time. Not when I come to the masjid or when there's a lecture or today I heard a lecture, now I'm moved, tomorrow we go back. And the last but not the least. Those who remember Allah, always plenty. Are you? Am I? And scholar says, what does that mean? What made you? Which, what do you do? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, she is dhakira lillahi kathira. No. We always say salah. No. Because we are, the more we are only thinking of salah, salah is the amud al-deen, is the pillar. But there is so many other things. Why didn't Allah say, wal musallina kathira? Allah could have said, because he said the sa'imin, he said those who fast. Why didn't he say those who pray? You have to think, because it is more general. What about the woman who can't pray in that time of the month? So she is removed. Not fair, is it? May Allah forgive me, but I just want you to think. No, any form of dhikr. Scholar says, if she does her morning and evening athkar, she's one of them. If she's always in a state of istighfar, she's one of them. If her salah is long, meaning you're reading more Quran, or you're doing longer sujood, you're doing longer ruku, you're one of them. If you alternate, you're one of them. But no dhikr of Allah unless I need him, or it's Ramadan, or I'm coming to the masjid, then I'm not under that category. Ula'ikan, Allah specified, those are the ones. You want the forgiveness of Allah? How many wants the forgiveness of Allah? You want the great reward of Allah? Not just the reward, the great reward of Allah? You need to work for it. You know, one of the other things uh, people will teach you, again, when you live here and you work here, what do they say? There's no free lunch in this country. One of the few first things I learned also. I was like, what does that mean? And then I learned it. Which is very true. This is our deen. No pain, no gain. That's the same thing. Those who struggle, struggle is pain. Struggle in our cause, we will guide them. Change, ladies, those are the women that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran. Where am I? How many of this I have? The real meaning of it, not the external meaning of it. Is it hard? How many say it's hard? And how many say, no, it's just I have not tried? How many say, I have no idea? I didn't even know of this. What is that? What is those who didn't raise their hands, neither here or there? What is that? What? Go home, think of it, write this down, go, it's in Surah Al-Ahzab, I think it's the verse 35, I don't remember, please forgive me, I don't know the, the numbers of the, may Allah forgive me, I should, but I don't. I think it's 35, but look at it, I'm sorry, Alhamdulillah, 35, 
right? And the Surah Al-Ahzab is what? 33? Alhamdulillah. So 33, 35. Write it down. And every day, in this is all practice for Ramadan. Every day. Right? And you say, today I'm a real Muslim. You say this and Allah will test you right away. And you're going to pass. Bi'idhnillah. Because you learned it. So every day, practice, practice. Before you teach your children, give them lectures. And before you teach and lecture your friend, talk to yourself. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Don't you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you great reward? The answer is yes, absolutely. Those are the women in the Quran. These are, he didn't give names. His description is who you are, who you want to be, what is your goal as a woman. Everybody have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan. You know, the usual question, how many of you have been in an interview for a job? Show me hands. But one of the most common questions is what? Where do you see yourself in five years? I was like, okay, again, the same question, right? It's always, right? Then I'm going to give you this question as a Muslim, as a female, as a woman. Where do you see yourself in five years from now? In your relationship with Allah, if Allah gives me life, what is your goal? What is your goal? Everybody different. Don't answer me. Who am I? May Allah give me a goal. But in general, where do you want to be? Where? In Jannah, for sure. The only, the only thing missing is the door of death. That when this door is open, I'm going. Where am I? Put, write it down. When you put your goals and write it down, you will get it bi'idhnillah. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا